Okay. We'll call the meeting to order. Good evening and welcome to the November 3rd, 2014 meeting of the BUHS 6th Board. Um, we are starting the main session a little later than usual tonight because we had the opportunity as a board to uh, participate in a sample smart balance assessment consortium test. And uh, it's uh, an interesting and worthwhile use of time. However, it was, in my case, a lesson in humility. <laughs> but uh, it was really interesting to see from way back to the Iowa test on the dots when I was doing it, how, how things have changed. And we'll, we'll hear more about that as we, as we start to implement them here. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, start the meeting by noting the, the passage of a, a real icon at BOHS, that's uh, Coach Andy Natowich, um, passed away last week at the age of 95, I believe. Um, and those of us who are old enough to have known Andy, and, and uh, in my case being a student here and, and dealing with him, uh, he, he really was uh, uh, the face of um, Colonel Athletics for a long time and a, a key figure in the development of a lot of, a lot of young people. Um, he, he was 30 years here as a coach, both baseball and football. He had certainly had the credentials of Holy Cross and playing in the NFL. Uh, but the thing that, that really defined Andy, I think, in a lot of ways, was his passion for the physical facilities that we have here now. And we have these facilities to a large extent as a result of, of Andy's pushing and pushing and pushing to get things done. The football field is, is named after him. It's obvious he had his fingerprints all over that. But also the baseball field, uh, total renovation of the baseball field, uh, Living Memorial Park field, uh, Fort Dummer field, uh, and then the Little League field too. He, he spent hours and hours and hours uh, uh, on that Little League field. So um, a lot of the, the uh, turf that's around the town of Brattleboro and the quality of the facilities, he had a lot to do with, as well as um, a great, great results with a basket, baseball and, and football team. Andy was a Definitely an old, uh, old style uh, type of coach. Uh, rode you hard, um, but made you grow up, and uh, uh, was was well respected. Uh, sometimes slightly feared, but always well respected. And uh, so we uh, note his his passing. Uh, a real a legend for sure in Brattleboro and at BUHS. Okay. Uh, Move on to the clerk's report quickly um, and approval of the minutes from October 20th, which were circulated a little while back. Sarah. I move the minutes. Lori? As presented. Second. A second. Okay. All right. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Okay, if not, all in favor of approving the minutes from October 20th as written? Please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed or abstentions? Aye. Yeah, Lori. Okay. All right. Um, communications? Okay. If there are none, what I'd like to do is uh, we have a, a guest tonight, and I would like to uh, uh, introduce Michaela Sims, and she has a, some information and I believe a request from us. I do. Hi, how y'all doing? Good. Hi. Good. Um, so I'm Michaela. I'm the diversity coordinator. And actually, I put the wrong year on this. It's just like 2015. I'm more selective. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and the poll is a trip to India. Okay, I have five minutes. I'm trying to be quick. Um, was it computer, computer two? Yeah, two, I think. Um, the trip would take high school students, and right now I have about 10 interested, to um, Bangalore, South India. Oh, thank you. 
Is that better, guys? Yeah. The so Baba Rama Educational Center, which is in Bangalore, is a place that I've been a couple times. It's in South India. This is the school itself. Um, these are the kids. And it's about, it'll be about a nine day trip. Um, kids will be based in the school and maybe take a, take a couple of trips out of the school. Um, it was started in 1948 at the beginning of Indian independence um, to educate the elite children, which are the quote unquote untouchable caste um, at the behest of Gandhi. So we stay there and based on student interest, like we have one student who wants to go who's interested in dance. We, she takes dance classes. There's language classes with Canada. For, for the last uh, 15 years or so, many of these students are, some of them study here, like Desmond just passed through. He was a student of UHS. They showed this picture. And other Keene State students have visited Baba Brahma. So it's often visited by students, middle school, high school, and college students from the US. Um, this cost would be about $2,000. Uh, most of that cost is airfare. We're trying to go very quickly. Um, the reason being, actually, it is cheaper. So some of the kids might be willing to go in July, but if we go in April, around April break, that locks about $800 <coughs> off the air um, So once we get there, room and board is pretty is inexpensive. The most exp expensive thing, actually, is ground transportation if we take trips in and out. I don't know if you have any questions. <coughs> I'm rambling. <laughs> So um, you'll be doing some fundraising for some life. fundraising. Students already have ideas. They want to do an Indian dinner, um, a dance. There's there's a whole list of things that kids have come up with to fundraise in order to go for kids that it's not reachable for. I'm sorry, you said about how many of you will be taking, but I don't have to say. Uh, ten kids are interested. I would assume that some of them would kind of slowly. I'm I'm not sure how many have. I think I have three have said for sure yes, and the others are thinking. Um, I've had one discussion with some parents. I would assume we would ask, if you approve it, we would have another informational meeting with parents to solidify to say yes, this is happening. How many of you are really interested? Um, but there's quite a lot of interest. So is this tied to a course? Is there any academic this, credit for it? There what? isn't any academic credit for it. It is very much connected to what every student studies in Social Studies one. Mm -hmm because it's world culture, world history. Um, also, I see it as a play, and I said that, as a way to kind of humanize the world for students, that here we are going to this place that seems far away and seems really foreign, but you're able to make connections to people and language and dance and culture. Um, no, I think it's a fabulous idea. I mean, to, to try to see the see other cultures. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh. No, I, 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 it, 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 it sounds great. And it's a very secure place. Like I would quite easily take my son, not a problem. It's a place that I feel com very comfortable. It's like home for me. That's me, actually. Um, I think that I read 20 books that summer. So I spent the whole summer there. I mean, one of the biggest stretches, I think, for students would be the food, maybe. How does the length of this trip compare to our usual trips abroad? It's about the same. Um, usually those trips are two weeks. Um, the trip to China is generally 20 days, so this is quicker than that trip. Um, but the first time we went to China, we didn't go for 20 days either. So, I mean, as, as, a, as a first trip to a new country, this is probably a good length. So you would be looking for the insurance waiver and substitutes? Right. We, um, actually, I don't believe you're going during break, right? You're going during break, right? For Mostly most during break, yeah. Right. Are you bringing a teacher? You're not bringing a It depends teacher. on the number of kids, I think, right? right? That whether or not we'll bring a teacher. But there are there is a teacher that's interested, but I don't know whether that would be necessary. So so we're looking for the board to um, extend the student insurance to cover the trip and to also um, if Michaela has enough to, to meet a second chaperone to cover the substitutes for the chaperone. Yeah. That, that would just would, be for a couple of days. That would just be for a few days, right? It wouldn't be for a week. So you're anticipating just a half dozen students or something? Like that. Yeah, I think that would be a nice start. Very memorable. Okay. And, and I'd probably recommend that we we have a, at least one other staff member go as a chaperone. 
just yeah. because you don't want to have, yeah. you always want to have a backup. Yeah. And uh, we would have a, uh, a follow-up visit to the board to mm -hmm. fill us in on how it went. Definitely. I'll bring kids. There's some food, too. Oh, my bad. I should have brought food this time. <laughs> okay. Table of motion. No pun intended about food. <laughs> um, any other questions or somebody be willing to make I a motion? I move approval of trip to India. And Kayla and such students as are able to go from April 20th to April 29th. Uh, the insurance waiver and substitution for a faculty member to accompany them. As necessary. Second. Okay. Okay, any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything else? I, I should have asked if there's anything else for the clerk's report or on the resolution, but is there anything else for the clerk's report? If not, we will move into consent agenda. There's a motion accordingly. When did we go into consent agenda? All right. Rick, do you need a second? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstention? Okay. We are in consent agenda. And as usual, we will start with finance committee. Finance committee met on October 8th at 8 a.m. And we approved the following warrants. Number 1055, 1058, 1063, 1064, and 1065, the total amount of $1,781,553.71. We had no payrolls to approve that day. We did um, discuss the financial 2014 preliminary financial <coughs> statements, and we discussed budget planning for the FY 2016 budget year. Okay, that was the meeting of the 8th. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, we did report that out on the, uh, oh. on the 20th. Um, oh. I did. You were, you were, that was a meeting, I believe yeah. you were not okay. here. Okay. So I reported that out, but we've also had another meeting on the 22nd. And yes, and I don't see that. Are those perhaps the numbers that you read from the... Well, that, that isn't, that wasn't, are those were the numbers that those are on the agenda. Right, those are the ones that are on the warrant. But yeah. we did meet on the 22nd, and my notes from that uh, say, oh yeah, those were the 10-6 warrants we approved on the 22nd. Okay. So we did we did what you said, but we did it on but, the 22nd. But we did it on the 22nd. <laughs> Twenty second or twenty fourth or whatever that day was. <laughs> that was a big warrant, the last one. It was a big one. Was there anything in particular yeah. that what comes to mind that was just just a, a lot of insurance payments? And well, there was a special, a big uh, special ed. A special ed. Special ed yeah, 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 that that happens on a quarterly basis. So um, there was that in there. Did we have any other exciting things that happened? Well, uh, a couple of, of items. Uh, as Ruth said, we did receive our 
tentative year-end um, financial statement, and uh, it, it's clear that we have surpassed our plan in terms of our uh, uh, ex expenditures. Um, as, as you may remember, we're, our budget did include uh, in, uh, utilizing some of our surplus from last year to help defray taxes. So uh, thereby, we actually projected a, an operating, a slight deficit that would be offset by that. However, we were better than we thought we were going to come out. Expenses were held to under, under the budget. So that looks good. We don't have the audited uh, final numbers yet. Um, so that was some good news. And uh, we have received uh, a, a nice outline of the budget process that Frank is using with the administration. Um, I, I thought it was pretty well and I know it's based on what you've done before, but it was helpful, I think, to us to see how everything is outlined. And we look forward to starting to see those, those budgets and hear about them uh, starting next week. Already. Already, yeah. Well, we're, usually we're right around by the fifth or so. We're, we're in that range. It's just like snow. I'm not ready for it. And the next, the next finance meeting will be this Thursday uh, at 8 a.m. in the central office. Thursday instead of Wednesday. Yep. yep. Good thing you said something. Well, uh, we no, we agreed. Okay, oh, oh, you I'm sure you we did. Yeah. I'm sure we did. Yeah. Yeah, it is a it is a change. Uh, I'll probably show up Wednesday as well. And then come back again <laughs> on Thursday. Yes, when you wrote the paper. There was some. Uh, conflicts for Thursday for Wednesday this time around. Okay. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, now we have added to our agenda so that I don't forget every time and you remind me, SCSU Finance Committee. Okay. We had a meeting on the um, meeting on the 29th. Um, and we're setting up the, uh, the the budget session as well and, and Frank presented sort of work in process in terms of, part of it is, is a transition um, from Jim to, to, to Frank, and um, <coughs> just in terms of reviewing the forms and the, the sort of presentations that Jim would make, and just sort of looking at it and putting his own stamp on it. And so we are, and so the same information is, is being presented as Jim used to do, but slightly, a slightly different format. Um, and he hasn't completely finished reviewing all of the uh, all of the past year um, items, um, and we're going to be looking at that uh, on the next Wednesday, the, the uh, what is it, the 12th, and so, or this, um, yeah, next Wednesday. So, um, not a whole lot, so we, we, we're just sort of coming up, up to, to speed on how those things are. Starting on the meeting in December is where we'll have each of the departments sort of come in and present it, it looked like maybe we're doing it there, sort of page by page about what all the, all the adjustments are. Um, now, it sounds it's good that you don't have a Wednesday budget meeting because they moved our Wednesday, next Wednesday budget meeting instead of 6 o'clock to 5 o'clock. And because the day before is Veterans Day, which is a Tuesday when I teach, but now I, Tuesday is a Wednesday. Anyways, I can't make the 5 o'clock meeting. So um, can one of my usual substitutes go in? Um, the 12th at 5 o'clock, so that's next Wednesday at 5. I most likely can do it if you can, Bob. 5 o'clock is tough for me this time of year. I know it is. 5 p.m., 5 a.m. 5, 5 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, that's 4 a.m. You know, with the daylight yeah. savings time. <laughs> I can go at 5 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can do that. That is fine. This is pretty slow at 5 a.m. So, Ruth, could you? I can do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, I think what he'll do is, is present a fuller summary of fiscal year 14, um, the current year budget, and, and where we're standing. 
and uh, and then looking back a few years at, at what the changes are. And there's some big changes as more and more the expenses get consolidated with the SU. So there's some some jumps coming. Up. That is okay. It. Thank you. Planning and policy. Uh, planning and policy met today. Uh, we reviewed several new policies that are coming down the pipe from the uh, SU. Uh, they have not, uh, we're a little ahead of the game on these. They have not been uh, approved there as far as I know. And so it's been recent. Uh, I expect we'll see them warned for first reading for our next meeting. Uh, so I expect to see those. Um, that's all we discussed. Okay. Uh, are they new policies or old ones that they're old recycling? ones that are up for review? Okay. But it will be our first look at the new at the, any revisions. And okay. some of them do definitely have some revisions. Okay. All right. Thank you. Teacher curriculum has not met since our last meeting. Okay. Bands also has not met since our last meeting. WRCC, we met this morning uh, with Mr. Burnett, and uh, he filled us in on some uh, plans for revisions in two or three programs uh, and some exciting new areas that he would like to get into. Uh, we'll talk more about that. He might might want to make a few brief comments about it, but uh, during his report, but we'll talk more about it as we get into the budget. But um, I, I have to say that um, the, the real positive I took away from this is, is that we're changing directions a little bit, but utilizing the resources that we already have. And I, and I think you agree with me on that, Ruth. That I do. It's, it's a very innovative thought about how to use not only human resources, but also the facilities. And uh, uh, that's the way we need to operate in this kind of an environment is, uh, OK, what can we do that's more appropriate or better for where we want to have the young people go and what, the, what we want them to be involved with, but without utilizing additional resources. So. We'll hear more about that as budgeting uh, moves along. We also um, received a, uh, uh, a draft copy of um, the Career Center budget, uh, which again, we will have presented to us as the Finance and Budget Committee, but a kind of a sneak preview. And uh, it's encouraging to see that um, expenses, and again, as a result of this reallocation of resources, uh, we're we will be able to do more with the resources that we that we have. So that was the sum and substance of the WRCC meeting this morning, right? Anything else? Well, I think you covered it very aptly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other committee meetings? I have a request before we move on yeah. to the next item on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that the board members would receive agendas of the committees before the committee meetings? Because I know that it's one of our goals to try to attend as many meetings as possible, even when I'm on the committee. So if there's something coming up on one of the committees that's of special interest to someone, then we may be more apt to try to schedule that in. Uh, OK. Uh, well, I, I know as it relates to um, finance, we usually have an agenda it's usually only a day or so ahead of ahead of time uh, does TCC put out and <coughs> well, usually TCC where we do a lot of is reviewing the um, the one percent proposals yeah. from the past so that's on the agenda that comes out that we're, cause we usually meet on the night of the school board meeting so we're gonna have a presentation in this classroom from this teacher so that's usually on it so that would be there that's the agenda Okay. Um, it would be good to get that out because those presentations are. are well, and they usually go up with the regular with the regular agenda, so we get those at least a week, usually about a week in advance anyway. Well, do that actually? Usually, it doesn't say exactly what we're meeting for; it just says the room number. Sometimes it says the room number. Sometimes it says what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. I think so I the 
the TCC agenda comes from Barb. Well, because it's on it's on our it's on the top of the oh on that agenda. Agenda. Yeah. yeah. But I can I'll, I'll work with Andy to get more specific what we're going to do, and, the and then it'll be on that agenda. The agenda for BAMS meetings is out a little bit ahead of time too. Or? Not typically, no. Okay. For planning and policy, usually, and today's an exception because we're ahead of the game, as I said, on the new policies. Usually, our policies are in the um, agenda because it's what's worn for first, second, or um, adoption. However, I can certainly send out an email to all board members if we're going to be discussing something else like the dress code discussion or um, upcoming policies like this. Well, I would find it helpful. So if I'm the only one, I could be in contact with the different chairs and no, I think see if I could get the agenda ahead of time. But it, it, it's probably one of the ones that would be of most, uh, not necessarily most interest, but finance because there's so many different topics that they come up. and. Uh, Frank has been sending us out uh, an agenda, um, and then he uses the format from the agenda to do the minutes almost immediately after the meeting, uh, and fills in what happened in each of those agenda items, uh, which I, which is which I think is good. Uh, so we could see that the finance uh, agenda is sent out. I just just so you know, it, it isn't always very far ahead of the meeting. So. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Um, if, if we send that out as a formalized agenda, per se, is, and it's not very far ahead of the meeting, are we going to create a problem with the notification rules? The notification? The, for open meeting notification rules, if we start having a formalized agenda but don't get it out in well, as long as we warn them. No, because, because just the meeting has to be warned, I believe. Yeah. I believe just the meeting has to be warned. As long as the meeting's warned and it doesn't matter the time, it doesn't necessarily matter what we talk about during that okay. meeting, just that we're, we're getting tailored to meet. Yeah. Okay. All right. In that case, uh, is there a motion to approve consent agenda? <coughs> Move that we approve consent agenda. Right. Oh, second. second. I second. I seconded. Okay. <laughs> the seconder of the night. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Everybody vote? Okay. It's unanimous. Okay. And we move on to administrative reports. Uh, we'll start with student council, right? That's what we'd like to do, we'll hear from them first. What we're here for. <coughs> so, uh, we're, we're passing out uh, these handouts. These are the quantification of the surveys we took during parent-teacher conferences over uh, parent awareness and concerns with the dress code policy. I'll, I'll wait until I shut them down. <clears throat> so we uh, we surveyed 58 parents over. Uh, we 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 had a number of questions. The first one was just general awareness, and of of the 52 who were aware. Of, of the dress code policy, uh, thir 30 of them had marked concerns that they brought up in the back page, which is uh, all, all, almost all of the concerns had, had to do with enforcement, either unequal between boys and girls or inconsistent, just in general. Uh, there were a couple that uh, I think the cheerleading outfits, uh, one thought the policy was too strict and one thought that the policy was badly worded. But there, there wasn't really any concerns regarding the, the content of, of the, the dress code. It, it, was more, it was more in general enforcement. <clears throat> um, in general, this was in line with what we found, what Mr. Perrin's um, survey found was the student's biggest concern with the inconsistent or unequal enforcement. 
and the other issue was the wording, the distracting terminology. Um, but parents did not really have an issue with that. Mostly probably about like the awareness of the specifics. Um, yeah, so from here we were looking to meet with uh, Mr. Perrin and Mr. Tory about the policy and just the student voice and what the students and now parents um, think about it. Any questions? That something that will happen yet this fall? <coughs> yes. We hope to meet with planning policy and uh, talk about it out. Um, not just the parent survey, but also the student survey in more detail. And then... And what about the staff survey? Is there a staff survey? There's not. There hasn't been one. Okay. We can do one, but I think I am pretty confident. you got your finger on that price. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest issue um, really has been, in both cases, um, a perception that it's um, enforced, and I think you guys said it really well, it's enforced unequally between genders and that it's inconsistently enforced. And so, you know, not a lot of feedback on the actual article dress code itself, more about how it's enforced. So. Can I ask how, uh, how were the parents chosen that were uh, surveyed? Uh, they, they were all given an option to fill out a survey as it came in for parent-teacher conferences. So yes, we understand it is a specific demographic that comes to parent-teacher conferences, and that's not, um, it's not the best way to get a whole variety of parents, um, but we thought it was the most convenient um, way to get parents in general. We would consider doing, um, sort of getting, like either sending something home or through email or something to try to get a larger number of parents there. Um, so to clarify that, every parent that came was given a survey and only 58 responded? And yes, everyone was offered a survey. <coughs> yeah, they, they were given the opportunity to, to fill out a survey, mm -hmm. and 58 chose to. And how many people attend, percentage-wise, of 400. What, what's that percentage? About half of the students. About half of the parents right. attended. The so I came to the conferences and I didn't see the survey. So <laughs> they were right in the front door from three to seven, right? As you walked in, they were a student council rep there. All right. Saying, Hi, would you like to take the dress code survey? All right. I probably saw a friend and got distracted or something. Didn't realize they were right there. It's, it's, it's interesting because fifty eight survey, ninety percent were aware of the dress code. So probably of the ones that didn't get surveyed, there was a much higher percentage of her Mm -hmm. Unaware of the guest code, they are willing to be surveyed. They probably were more likely to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, <coughs> but it's an observation. Anything else for student council? Nope, I think that's it. Yeah, our, our feed feed the thousands kick off is in. Yep, next Monday. Next Monday. Yeah. Monday. More so, than Yeah. So our next meeting, we'll so. hear how the kickoff went, right? For sure. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to BAMS. Line right. Yeah. Do a cheat sheet here. Um, so uh, I'll just update you on a few dates and uh, events going on. Um, next week, well, um, the high school dimensions uh, like a class, I think, right? The dimensions, the dimensions of social change. Uh, dimensions of social change is a, um, so there's high school students running, uh, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, um, they're coming in, they're running a session with our students and our leadership students and a few extras. It's about 60 of our students. Uh, for us, it will be over uh, this coming Wednesday and then the following Wednesday, and uh, other schools are coming to, to run the same program. I think Putney was there last week, and we're coming up, and then some other schools will be coming later on. So looking forward to that. Um, our parent-teacher conferences are coming up November 10th, 11th, and 12th, and uh, we're offering mornings, daytime, and evening um, sessions for parents, and they sign up through... Uh, um, they sign up through appointments. Um, we, uh, we're finalizing our plans for the in-service work on November 24th, 25th, and some of the topics that we're looking at are ESBAC test prep that you um, 
you know, sampled this evening, uh, talking about proficiency models, uh, standards-based grading, and also uh, the PLP, um, the PLP stuff, and, and most of that stuff's addressed in our action plan. This Thursday we have an action plan me meeting, and uh, we'll we'll try to lock that down a little tighter. Um, and then we're also trying to um, coordinate some time on Tuesday afternoon for the middle high school te teams to get together to talk um, um, vertical alignment of curriculum, uh, among amongst other things. Um, let's see, uh, November six, so it's coming up this. Thursday, I believe we have a technical coming. I think I mentioned it at previous meetings, and uh, so they'll be here. I'll be excited for that. And there's a 7 p.m. parent um, portion of that. Um, so hopefully we will get a uh, good turnout. And then November 13th is the fall concert, um, middle, middle Land High School, correct? Mm -hmm. So that's a quick update. Um, any questions about things going on in bands? What time is the concert? Fall concert? Seven? Seven p.m. Could you just elaborate a little bit on the uh, dimensions of social change? So that's high school students going in and doing a. They prepare right. like a skit, yeah. right? Dimensions of social change, it's, um, it's a dual enrollment course and it's about asset development um, and how to be a role model yourself and how to stand up yourself and also how to be a role model for other students. And so one of the things that this group does is throughout the year, they do workshops with area elementary students and area middle school students. You know, last week Green Street was here, um, you know, the band's business coming up. And the whole idea behind the course is that um, to help build citizenship, to help better build awareness of, of social norms and really kind of understand um, what role an individual can play in helping promote social change, and yeah, you know, it builds a lot. A lot of it builds on the asset development work that's done in the summer with sixth through eighth graders. Yeah. We go to SIT for that. Um, okay. okay. Any other thank you. <coughs> question, comments, BAMS? If not, BOHS. <coughs> so first, I am. Um, thrilled to let the board know that uh, Steve Rice, our uh, music, one of our music teachers, our music department head, has been selected by his peers as the Vermont Music Educator of the Year. Um, it's an incredibly well-deserved award. We all know how hard Mr. Rice works, what he does um, with his ensembles. Um, what you may not know is the work he also does with individual students. He does an incredible job working with students from all instruments and even students that don't necessarily play an instrument in his advisory. He does a great job connecting with kids and working with kids. Um, this is an award that, as I said, was certainly well deserved and uh, we're pretty thrilled for Steve. We think it's awesome. And, uh, you know, obviously, if you see him, please pass him your congratulations. Um, along those same lines, 35 BUHS musicians and six from bands will, um, were selected to play in the Connecticut Valley District Festival and they'll join students from all across Southern uh, and Eastern Vermont at Bellows Falls on November 21st and 22nd for their, for their fall festival. And uh, I'm sure, as usual, we'll do a great job there. Uh, last Thursday, uh, the 11th graders all took the SBAC practice test, the same test you took um, this evening. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, the juniors didn't really have as many problems with the technology. Um, as adults have had, I'm not pointing fingers. <laughs> um, however, you know they they did have some concerns about the content. They they were they had some questions about it, it was loud, but that was a great experience for them to sit down and actually sit for an hour. And, and we really solicited their feedback, and, and I was glad that they were able to kind of tell us. And they were brutally honest, and they were candid, and, and I was really glad that they could do that. Um, while they were doing that, our tenth graders were taking the Aspire test in the gymnasium. The Aspire test um, used to be called the PLAN test, and that's actually the, yeah, stick with me for the acronyms. Um, that's actually the precursor to the ACT exam, which students take as a college entrance, entrance exam for some schools. And um, last year when they took the PLAN test, it, it took from about 8.30 or 8.45 till about 11.45. 
Um, we didn't realize this, but the Aspire test is much longer, and those sophomores spent from 8.45, they did have a break and they had lunch, but they essentially spent from 8.45 to 2.30 um, taking this really long multi-part test. And so I can't say enough about how our 10th graders behaved. They were great, they were awesome. Um, they took it seriously. Um, you know, we reminded them, of course, that this test is really for them. It's really not a test that we get the results, they get the result. And we hope they use it for college and career planning because they get a lot of good feedback about how they've done academically so far and depending on what career path they want to follow, what they need to do next. Um, of course, the budget process is in full swing, as everybody knows, and uh, we're working hard on that. Uh, I'm also really proud to say that WSESU has been awarded a $25,000 grant, and that grant is called Proficiency-Based Learning, a Systematic Approach. And that grant will involve um, teachers and administrators from the high school, the middle school, and the career center, as well as from Putney Elementary School, um, to kind of learn how um, proficiency-based learning works, how do we develop a model, and what does it look like. We're going to spend a lot of time on November 10th and 11th with the faculty talking about you know, what are the tenets of proficiency-based learning and how is it different from traditional learning, and then throughout the year, we'll attend a series of workshops that will kind of help us kind of develop our own model for a proficiency-based um, graduation plan moving away from a traditional plan. So stay tuned. We're pretty proud we got that grant. Yeah, yes. Is, is, um, it, is it easy to give like a two-sentence summary of what a proficiency is? Sure. Um, two seconds. Um, a proficiency-based model really rather than being based on um, what we expect the students to learn and having a summative mindset. Instead, it's really based on a growth mindset. So the realization and the accepting that every student learns at different rates, and they also can demonstrate things in different ways. Um, one of the classic examples used is if you have a student who really has trouble with fractions, and they really can't do fractions, and so you, you, you sit them down in front of the SBAC or whatever, and they try to do fractions, they just can't figure it out. Um, you have to look for alternative ways for a student to express their understanding of fractions and that they can use them. So maybe what you do is you take that student and you say, okay, what I would like you to do, instead of having to complete this, this worksheet or this exam, what I want you to do is take this cookie recipe or this cake recipe and scale it up or scale it down. And in that way, get to the same thing because if you're doing two-thirds two -thirds of a cup of sugar, um, for one, how many thirds of a cup do you need to make 10 pies or 10 cakes? So the whole idea is that we need to accept that students are going to demonstrate proficiency in different ways. We've already kind of started with our dual credit program. And um, you know, we're going to explore it a little bit more. That was more than two seconds. Um, finally, uh, Mike Auerbach, uh, science teacher, Megan Shear, socialized teacher at Sam Rowley from the Career Center. They're taking a group of students to the Vermont Youth Climate Summit on December 5th. Um, that group is also working with Preserve Our Planet, and we're kind of excited to see what they're going to do. They're going to come back with an action plan for um, climate change and climate studies that they'll do based here. And along those same lines, uh, the Freedom and Unity Film Project, uh, which is a Vermont project, has um, launched a program telling teen Vermont stories. And that project is going to be headed up by Allison Cram, Mike Auerbach, and Toby Moore. And uh, we look forward to seeing what they produce as well. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Um, Steve? I have a question from Mr. Lyman. Speaking of what is something, what's vertical learning? Well, vertical alignment is vertical alignment. trying to uh, uh, make sure you're aligned, you know, eighth grade to ninth grade transition, let's say in English, that they're aligning their curriculums so they flow, you know, um, they flow from year to year. Okay, great. And that, um, you know, when, when you look at proficiencies that they've identified which skills they need to be proficient in at each grade and through each unit, um, so they build upon each skill they've learned. So, so they're not just jumping around. Uh, well, the proficiency piece, really what, you know, 
one of the things when the definition of proficiency is traditionally we say we're teaching this from you know weeks one and two and we're in weeks three and four we're moving on to the next piece regardless of how the students perform and a proficiency model says you won't move on until the students are, are um, proficient um, that they're, they're meeting the standard um, and uh, so it puts a little more emphasis on student learning instead of moving through a curriculum and getting to the end. Good. It's good to hear. Okay. Thank you. Let's move on to SWRCC. Mr. Burnett. On October 21st, I, as I mentioned the, at the last meeting, WRCC FFA students attended the uh, Soils and Judging Land Judging Competition at BCT, oh, I'm sorry, not BCT, in Randolph. And the four students were Justin Wheeler, Sean Lynch, Alec Fleming, and Troy Wood. They uh, all placed first for the state of Vermont in the FFA competition again this year. So congratulations to those boys and Mr. Hamilton for I think it's the 21st year that the WRCC has taken first in the judging. So they have an opportunity to compete nationally in Oklahoma City this spring. So good job for all those guys. This fall, the digital editing class is creating a movie encompassing all of our programs at WRCC. The advanced filmmaking students are using Col or Max Strime and Colby Nelson Bates are using their skills to create a wonderful outreach video that we will use for student tours and when we go to sending schools to speak about the Career Center. And it's a, a nice engaging project that the kids are really excited in getting into during the school day. So it'll, I'm hoping it'll be done in the spring before our recruiting starts and I'll uh, probably show it if that's possible. Uh, four future business leaders of America students along with their advisor Mary Beth Cornell will be traveling to New Orleans at the end of this month to attend a small business uh, conference with students across the United States and this will focus on many different business skills and a great opportunity for these four students. And the funds have been uh, raised by the, by the students that are going. So as it came out of the budget. On November 10th, the high school will be hosting actually a career expo in the gymnasium for our students, the 11th and 12th graders. And our business students have been asked to create a video of the do's and don'ts when going to an employer type setting looking for jobs. And that the video will consist of the do's and don'ts and so forth, which will be pretty, it's pretty exciting to see. And uh, that'll be viewed uh, from the juniors and seniors during their advisory periods before the career expo next week. So, very exciting stuff. And uh, that's it. And there will be more to come on budget and my proposals and that Woody touched upon earlier. And I also will be reporting out on the SREB and the technical assistant visit coming up uh, December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. It's next month. Right, less than a month away now. Yep. I'll give you more details. And next there morning. will be. Um, some board representative involvement yes in that we will be informed and they wrote, wrote yeah. Wrote. yeah okay Great. thank you um ron is not here uh so he didn't pass anything along to me specifically to mention um the uh 
SCSU grant was alluded to and proficiency-based learning. Uh, board chair, I just would comment that I was uh, able to attend the DSBA annual meeting for it was a two-day meeting at Lake Maury. I was able to get up there Friday, and uh, it's, it's always great to get a chance to talk to people from all over the state and in all different situations uh, with respect to school size and, uh, and challenges as it relates to budgets and so forth. Um, we, we had presentations um, along those lines and it was really a lot to think about and uh, when I left my head was kind of spinning I guess as to uh, changes coming in education in Vermont for sure. Uh, we had a, a presentation on uh, the impact of health care reform, uh, which is still a giant question mark out there, but it's going to have an impact on uh, our, our school operations uh, as it relates to the, the, the health care program. Um, we had a presentation on uh, collective bargaining, um, and uh, that was interesting to see some of the some of the things that are coming down the line. But I think the, the biggest thing uh, that we kept coming back to was the overall challenge of education in Vermont, cost versus um, you know, the ability for the taxpayer to pay the cost versus declining enrollment. And we're in much better shape uh, here. We're a bigger operation <coughs> with a more stable population, but there are many schools around Vermont that have lost 20, 30, 40 percent of their students. And how do you, how do you present a quality program uh, and, and do it at what uh, a cost that can be supported uh, with a constantly dwindling population? So um, there's a lot of work to be done along those lines. Uh, it, we had a very interesting session after after lunch in, in which uh, students, uh, two two high school teams, by, um, I don't remember BFA St Albans I think and um, uh, Hartford, each uh, in a real debate style, and the topic was school consolidation, and uh, it was it was very interesting because as you know in a debate one. By a flip of a coin, one team has to be for and one team has to be against. And they, they both presented excellent arguments. They went back and forth and they counter queried each other. Uh, but at the end of the, at the, end of the session, um, they were asked, okay, putting the debate aside, um, which, which side would you take? And I was a little bit surprised that all four um, took the position that uh, some uh, consolidation in some areas was uh, was appropriate for, and they all took the approach that it's the opportunity for the students. And I think that as we think about this topic, that's something that we have to constantly keep in mind. You know, stop, I mean, it's important to worry about the taxpayers and how much they can spend and all that, but it's the quality of the program and the access to quality uh, programs that has got to be foremost, and that, that was loud and clear from the students uh, that, that did this debate. So it was a, a very thought-provoking day, um, lots of challenges ahead, but uh, definitely worthwhile and a great, and, and the Superintendents Association meets at the same time, so we're all kind of together, so great meeting. Okay. Uh, I think we've covered all the administrative reports. Uh, is there any unfinished business? Um, under new business, I would just uh, comment on a couple of things that we, I forgot to make comments on. One is that there's a regional advisory board meeting tomorrow um, at noon. The, RAB and we'll be having, a, I assume we'll have another student presentation? Two. Two, okay. We've been doing this in the RAB meetings and I, I Ruth will back me up on this. It's been really interesting that uh, Michael's been bringing uh, at each of our RAB meetings, which are quarterly, uh, one or two of the uh, different strand 
uh, program students to present their program, and it's really interesting. Um, and then the other thing is just a reminder, starting uh, next week, um, budget meetings, the 5.30 review of the various unit budgets. Uh, we start on the 13th, which is next Thursday, and the following week, um, we'll have a budget meeting before the school board, but before the school full board meeting on the 17th. But uh, between now and the next board meeting, we do have one uh, budget meeting, um, PUHS uh, in this room, I believe, at 5.30 on the 13th. And uh, the Finance Committee will participate in the fun and frolic, and anyone else who's so disposed is welcome to join us. Anything else for new business? Mr. Chairman, I do have something. I have, this came from a parent teacher's meeting, and it says, the following statement was made by a prominent educator. The public school fails to fit our boys and girls. In the discussion, the responsibility of parents toward the children and the school was emphasized, and also the thought that they should share in any praise or blame that is due. Now, this was in a newspaper article, but it wasn't this week. This was in May 25th of 1928. <laughs> Have things changed? <laughs> that was before our time, though. That, Barely, was, right? that, that was before our time, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. It sounds like it could have been in today's paper. Yeah. This is it. That's my point exactly. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Anything else? I thought you were getting ready to make your normal motion. You surprised us there. <laughs> Once in a while, I do have something else. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. <laughs> I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, all opposed or abstentions? Seeing none, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much, especially for the the uh, attendance at the S, uh, SPAC test. Uh, it was a good time. Yeah, it was a good time to <laughs> by all. <laughs>